Hey there, welcome to 50 Questions Friday for June 17th of 2020. Um, we will go ahead and do the Trinity breath to go into the heart space this morning. Uh, so the Trinity breath is simply imagining your consciousness is sitting here in the head. It's a small ball of light. We're going to move that back down into the physical heart and you will be grounded with the earth and connected to creation. So here we go. A quick three breath exercise. Closing your eyes if you wish. Putting your attention to your physical heart where you find your light, your soul's fire and imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that supporting, loving light of the earth. Breathing that up right through the feet and into the heart. Next, we connect with you as creator, your soul, you as God creator, and breathing in that light, that support, breathing that into the heart. Now we connect with both the earth and you and breathe those energies in so that you become this column of light that is grounded, connected in the heart space. Right here and now and ready to create. Good to see everybody here this morning. Um, Yep, and we got, uh, if, if you're just joining us live here uh, versus on YouTube or after the fact, please do jump in here on the chat tab. We got a lot of great people here, as always, and then drop your questions in here on the questions tab. And I will find the question here from email. So we did have one question here this week I haven't looked at that's through email. Okay, so just taking a moment to say hey to everybody here. Ron, Kendall, Peter, Nika, and everybody who's usually on here. Thank you all for being here. Connie, Kendall, Christine. Um, hey, Greg, good to see you this morning too from Wisconsin. So again, if you'd like to drop your questions over here on the questions tab, but otherwise I'll go ahead and get started here with uh, the first question today. Um, can you give more information about chalice rings and what effects the energies have and do? There seems to be very little information on the website and it seems to be the forgotten energy. So the chalice energy is, um, the chalice is where everything shifted not only in our personal perspectives and in the bigger work that we do, but also with the tools. So the chalice energy, it is something, it's simply a crystal clear, pure, pure light. It's, it's consciousness. Um, it is, it's, it's a pure form of light in that it is not the duality light, the light in the dark, the perpetual motion engine of balance that's been what creation's been about in this universe balancing the dark and the light we're done with that the chalice energy is the crystal clear pure pure consciousness light that came in about a year and a half ago it does not fight the dark it does not take on sides with the light it just is the dark and the light then in the face of this energy release they release their fight. Dark and light is nothing more than a fight. It's a balance. The true light is you, your light. Um, the chalice energy is simply a space holder for more of your unadulterated light to come in. Your light that is not fighting the dark or denying the dark. Um, it just simply is. So the chalice energy is in all of the tools now. 
when the chalice first came in, it permeated all the Aetheric templates. It went through everything. It permeated the earth. The chalice energy is simply, it's something that has been here since the beginning. Since the beginning of this universe in duality, the chalice energy, that crystal clear, pure consciousness light has been in the undercurrent. It's been carried. It was carried by the Knights Templars, the Essenes, um, you know, just to keep it in remembrance here on the planet until it was ready to just flourish, expand. Uh, so now then this, this chalice energy, as we're calling it, it's just, it's simply, it just is, it's, it's, it's throughout everything. And it is simply a space holder for, for everybody to step out of the duality experience. Um, coming here, having soul groups to, you know, do all the stuff to gain experience through lifetimes, to gain wisdom. So the chalice was the precursor as well to being able to step in to like the wisdom fields to where we bring in all creation that is us all of our creation and we bring that in the good the bad the ugly the beautiful and as we bring in all of our creation as a soul in this universe dark light otherwise we bring that in as wisdom and as consciousness so the chalice was really the beginning of this whole process of bringing in experience as wisdom light consciousness soul Anyway, that's our question from the questions tabs this morning. Um, hey, Malik, good to see you here again today. Uh, let's see. Oh, Craig. Uh, reached out, is going to be buying a house close to a cell tower. Spoke with Mary. Mary at the studio, phenomenal person to talk to, yes. Um, she talked about a fire ring. Uh, so it must have been the golden fire. So the golden fire is an energetic that is great for transforming electromagnetics. The tower is about 800 meters away from the house. Um, so to work with um, electromagnetic emitters in your neighborhood, a cell phone tower, we suggest the golden fire tensor field generator. Now, just a golden fire ring itself, a ring only creates a column of energy. So this ring, you would have to set it directly underneath of the tower for this column to actually interface with the tower. What we suggest is a tensor field generator. Now, the, um, and the tensor field generator is these spherical forms that are made of four rings that, um, that then, and I just have a crystal put in this one from last week, but the golden fire tensor field generators have a sphere of influence of about two and a half miles. Um, so if you have that golden fire tensor field generator, we carry several sizes. Doesn't matter the size. I would go with the most economical one, the two and a half inch. Um, you can place that anywhere in the home because it goes through walls, rocks, everything, the earth. Place that golden fire generator anywhere in the home or your car since it's close by and it will take care of that entire cell phone tower. Basically then within that field of the golden fire generator and your cell phone tower is here, you're all within the field as the cell phone tower begins to broadcast 360, it is then within the field of the golden fire generator, it transforms the broadcast into something beneficial. So having that golden fire generator is going to clear that entire tower. There are other ways um, you can use a, uh, a quantum grid point, but again, you would have to take this and place this directly near that tower or tower facility. As long as you were within, you know, 50 feet of the tower, when you drop this or throw this in there, that will also take care of the tower. The other way, the way that I go all over the world and teach people how to anchor columns of light would be the other way that you can work with that cell phone tower. Though you have to trust in your own, you have to trust in yourself and your abilities, which is, which is great. I would suggest doing the video tutorial on 
light anchoring. We have light anchoring 3.0, where basically you walk through a meditation style that I guide you through and it's free. And I guide you into having the attunement to the energetic aspect of the golden fire and light wands, because these are the wands that energetically we use these to anchor the columns of light into cell phone towers, which then broadcast beneficial energies. So you can anchor columns of light. It just takes that simple meditation, light anchoring 3.0. That is the, the other way that you can work with that cell phone tower without even having to buy a product. So, and it's self empowering. So there are some ways that you can work with that tower. It just depends on, you know, what, what you feel in your abilities. And I know anchoring columns of light might be a little bit far out there, a little bit too woo woo. But really, it's it's a beautiful self empowering um, exercise to do. But yeah, totally. Otherwise, the generators, the little pyramids, either one of those will clear the tower. If you just have them in your home, it'll protect your home. So, um, and yes, glad you're here though, Craig, because yeah, we got a lot of great information here on the website. So um, I I know you won't be bored there. Uh, Nika, on the wings of talk utilizes the wisdom ring. Does it also contain the new energy? So, um, no, at the moment, the, the new energy that we're working in, um, that we're playing with here, is not through the other tools yet. We are still, we're still working on bringing this new energy in fully, which we'll talk a little bit more about here. Um, so right now the wings of talk is just containing that wisdom energetics, which is still pretty phenomenal. Um, Diane, my cousins experienced profound tiredness when using the first tensor tools, which were the new energy halo and the new energy four ring bracelet sphere. What do you think? Why do you think they feel tired? Uh, transformations. Um, these, the, the newer tools, especially, and especially if people haven't been exposed to this energy or they're not actively doing the work of aligning, releasing, things like that. When they come into the fields of some of these tools, it is doing so much. Granted, the fields are holding space in a no time space where things can take place without having to have that lag in that, you know, and and have them have processes, you know, that have to go through time. So within these spaces, there is so much that occurs. And a lot of this is on the physical. Now, even though that we are doing our releasing of the crap, the energy that we carry, which affects the physical and makes us lighter, but we're also bringing in and integrating more of who we are, as well as so many other potentials, such as, um, you know, on the physical. I mean, when we come into the fields, especially in this new energy, um, you know, it's really radical changes that are taking place. They're all energetic, subtle, but they all affect us. Now, it is always the higher soul self, your consciousness, your soul, your light that is in charge of what occurs within these fields. So whatever occurred for them that they were tired, everything else was absolutely perfect, divine between them and their soul. Um, you know, I know here in the past year, a lot of us have had to, um, you know, just stop, you know, if as we're going through the changes and the transformations ourselves, if we get physically bogged down, tired, um, whatever, you know, we've had to, you know, I know a lot of us don't really have the ability um, to just say, okay, boss, I'm going to stop and rest for 10 minutes here. But, you know, a lot of us are finding that we have to make the time for ourselves to rest, to integrate, because so much is happening. Um, so, yeah, what the tiredness is within those fields, uh, the tiredness that they have after being exposed to those new energy fields, all perfect and divine. And it's not going to be the way that every person responds. 
And it's not going to be the way that that person responds every time because there's always something different that's taking place. Um, let's see. David, what's the best tool for personal protection and energy boosting? Um, you know, the, the On the Wings of Talk pendant is one that, that comes to mind um, right here for, for you, David, is, is the On the Wings of Talk pendant or the Wings of Talk pendant. Um, so it's, it's just that small wings of talk. What I would suggest too is also putting that harmonizer ring around it. So, so the wings of talk, you can get just the pendant itself, but you can also get that additional ring that goes around the outside of it. It just boosts it. Um, I was seeing if I had a wings of talk pendant here, which I don't. Now, Truly, any of the tensor tools are going to be doing great things. If you don't feel to invest in that Wings of Talk pendant, um, you know, which is why I did not say the Divine I Am, because that one's that one's definitely a spendy pendant. But the Wings of Talk with that ring around the outside, it would be perfect. But also, if you were looking to go even cheaper yet, I mean, to save more money, look at going with one of the wisdom, um, just the simple wisdom ring pendants. The simple one in, what is it, one in five eighths or one in eighth wisdom rings, um, or that new energy ring, that's that small one. Those would be just as fun, just as well. Um, but truly, if you really want the deep, deep protections, um, transformations, releasing of the things that aren't yours, helping to release those things that you carry that, you know, may be yours. The Wings of Talk pendant to me still feels like the appropriate one for you, David. Um, but like I say, totally can go with the wisdom or the new energy rings too. Uh, Nika, I've placed a new energy ring from the prototype page on a quantum grid point. Whew. How does that enhance or change the point's energy? It feels great, and I've been putting it in my bath water. So to me, it feels like it brings in just a, uh, I hate to use the word divine, but just a more, a more divine, crisper, cleaner, peaceful. Oh, shit, it's because the energy of you is the energy of the soul that comes in more. And yeah, that totally feels good. Um, you know, I have a feeling that we're going to find that these new energy tools are going to be changing a lot of our tools and crystals because it's just bringing more of, of, of our, our essence, our consciousness, our light into the things. Um, and that's great that you put that in the bath water too. Um, you know, because I, I, I do like using these in water, uh, the quantum grid points. And I love that idea of using that, that new energy ring. Um, which this is one of the ones I have in my pocket here too. But yeah. Yeah. I love the way that feels. So yeah. Thanks for sharing that one for sure. Um, hey, Brenda, what tool would you recommend to help heal a swollen sore knee? I would, you know, working on the physical, I love, love, love my wisdom wand, my full size, regular wisdom wand um, for doing the physical work. For one, you can run energy. And so you have something tangible that's working on the physical electromagnetic body. So you can be running energy to it. But at the same time, you're also holding space for the the core through mad, no matter what lifetime, no matter what energetic um, reasoning for this being, the wisdom wand is also working on that. So the wisdom wand will give you that instant relief by working on the physical, by running energy to it. So then your physical feels it, but then you are also working on the real true core reason of that and clearing that through all creation, all lifetimes. So, you know, that's what I sort of suggest is the wisdom on working on that. Uh, Craig, how do you, how did you start your journey 
And what are these teachings based in? Can the dark versus light referenced earlier be correlated to Satan versus God? So um, I started my journey. My Okay, so my sister Brenda, Brenda Schnoes, who channels the Elders 3, she doesn't really channel that much anymore. She's more in alignment with her soul. My sister Brenda is a humble country gal, the one of the people, one of the very, very few people on the planet that I know of that is so in the heart that they don't get taken down rabbit holes of beliefs. They, they don't, uh, they're, they're not as, um, you know, they're in alignment. Brenda is so in alignment with her soul that she, you know, she doesn't, she's not swayed by belief structures or this or that, you know, it, she, she stays in alignment with her light, her soul. And that is where she's my mentor in all the work that I do. And she helps keep me in alignment as well as she helps in the co-creation of the energetic aspects of the tools. So, for 12 years is all that I have been on my path. Before that, I was very science minded, but for lifetimes, I have been creating these higher dimensional energy tools and perfecting these tools for humanity right here and now for myself and others so that we can step forward. So this is not based in any books or teachings or religions or anything like that this is all based in the the tools themselves are based in my lifetimes of creating these tools for here and now um and then the the, the work that we do so the things that we find along the way like when we found the the golden fire energy which is nothing more than the sacred heart the trifold gold flame that Jesus and Mary are always depicted with in those in those paintings. The sacred heart, that is something that, that we found. There's you know, there's stories on that out there about the golden fire and how we found that, received that activation, and then we put that into the tool so others receive that activation from their soul as well. So everything that we do is all about being in the heart space and being in alignment with with your own light um, and empowering others to do this. So as far as the whole duality thing, um, the Satan versus God, yeah, you know, the Satan versus God is not a very old story. That's that's pretty new in the universe and the planet. I mean, that's, that's something made up just a couple thousand years ago. But the dark and the light, the good and the bad, the duality, the duality is what has existed in this universe since the beginning of this universe. But it has been here for experience, for soul growth learning. So as we are right now, as we are using these fields like the wisdom energetics and the others to bring in all of our experiences through all these lifetimes, especially here as the human on this planet. And we're bringing in all these traumas, all these experiences. We're turning them into wisdom, which is light, which is consciousness, which is your soul. So the work that we're doing with these tools is nothing more than um, bringing in, in all of that wisdom, that wisdom that we have accumulated as a soul, as a human, throughout all of our experiences here. Um, so it is quite a different paradigm. Um, I, I, I never used to believe in any of this stuff. I'd call myself a tinfoil hat wearing fool if I saw myself 12 years ago, 13 years ago. Um, you know, so we just follow our hearts. And, and that is truly where you get your discernment from is what we do with going into the heart space. And that is how the best way to discern what information is right for you. You don't have to make sense of it logically feel it. If it feels sticky, scary, ugly, don't, don't even, don't participate in that crap. 
but you can use your own discernment on this information here that I'm presenting if it is in alignment with you. And if it's not in alignment with you, please do just let it go. Um, find your discernment for sure. Anna, I recently bought some new energy tools, the sample and the halo. They've not arrived yet. I've been having a, having apparent premonitory dreams and complaints to leave other people's thoughts. Is the energy shifting or could these tools be already working with me? I know I feel they're already working with you, you know, and that's is that when we make a choice to to do anything like you choose to buy these tools for these specific purposes, it's, it's already there in the choice and, and the energies are already happening. The, the tools happen to be just a physical anchor point for these energies, but you've already chosen to begin working with these energies. And so your soul is doing the work. You're doing the work. You are allowing your soul to do the work. So um, that's pretty fantastic, Anna. I'm, I'm glad that um, things have been coming up. And so... So, yeah, you know, it comes back to that everything truly is a choice. And so as you are dealing with people and other people's stuff or, or anything in your world, just make a choice, um, you know, just say, no, you know, that's that's not mine. I release it, um, you know, make simple choices in your life. If you have, okay, so I could go off on a quick soapbox tangent of, of new realizations to me here recently some of my new realizations which i'm going to be implementing here over the next week is that um basically everything truly is a choice so if something is happening in your world and you're like man you know i just i i don't like it it, it makes me feel icky it's not what i want to experience whatever just say it just okay i choose i choose to no longer participate in that Watch how it shifts. Holy smokes, you guys. Right now, as we are so in alignment with ourselves, with creation, because we are creators, as we step in and we consciously, from the heart, preferably from the heart, we consciously from the heart say, I do not choose that anymore, or I choose something bigger and better without limitations. If you're choosing something to bring in, make sure that you're not limiting it. Make it open. If you're choosing for something that is within your reality that you no longer want, you can be specific. Yeah, okay, okay. Yep, I no longer choose that. And let it go. It is amazing. And I think that if we all took a week and made conscious choices to yourself of things that come up into your awareness, I choose not to participate in that anymore. Ooh, I love that. I choose to bring more of that feeling of that into my life. I choose that abundance. I choose that joy. That's it. Simple. And then you don't sit there and mull it over and try to do the energy work with it. Oh, my abundance, my abundance. I don't have abundance, you know, and, and then you're just sitting there and you're feeding a creation. So you, in this process, choose it, let it go. I would love to hear from you guys how this works out because I really truly think that in the space that we are in right now, that this is the answer, this is the key, and that it's so simple. Um, anyway, uh, could you explain the love and gratitude and what we can do to contribute? Oh, the love and gratitude grid. Oh, certainly. So we started a level, global love and gratitude grid, which we actually have a website called globalloveandgratitudegrid.com. And basically what that was, was it was the, the, the first beginning parts of, of creating the, the columns of light. And really anymore, um, at the time that that, grid was created. It was an artificial grid on the planet. But since 2015, Gaia has incorporated that grid system as a natural grid. So now then, whenever we go out and you use the the um, the meditations or the the instructional videos that I have out there to anchor the columns of light, you are connecting into that global love and gratitude grid. 
And so anytime that you go out and you anchor a column of light using the, the simple the simple steps that I've shown, that I've given out there, and there's, gosh, every time we do a light anchoring video, it's different. So there's all different ways, but it's just basically attuning to the energetics of this higher dimensional tool and receiving that golden fire, that sacred heart activation. And then from there, it is just bringing in that light and dropping it in those places. And when you're anchoring that light, that is contributing to the global love and gratitude grid because that has become um, a, a, an, an organic grid system on the planet. So anytime you anchor a column, it connects to all of them. It increases the light quotient of the planet and it does great things for you too every time you anchor a column of light. So, um, Really, the, the best way to participate in, in adding to that global love and gratitude grid is simply just anchoring columns of light everywhere. Um, such, such, a, such a profound tool and so easy to do. Um, you know, I get to where I just look at a place and have an intention and I feel the shift. You know, it, you can really simplify your columns of light. Uh, Diane. I placed a column of light around a crystal cliff that the Missouri River runs past, and it is near the homes downstream of several relatives. What effect do you think this cliff has on the waters and the land that has been the birthplace of many relatives? <clears throat> so the columns of light, when we place a column of light, it is not just in this here now moment, it extends throughout time. That's huge. You know, the, the newer columns of light that we've been doing, that's just happen, That's just what they do, is they extend through time. Especially when we start to attune with the wisdom energetics and some of the newer columns of light videos. Um, I think we did one. Um, gosh, I think it was a solstice event. It's on YouTube where we use the wisdom wand to anchor the columns of light. Um, and basically especially when you're using the wisdom energetics and you anchor the columns of light with a wisdom wand, um, it is totally traversing through time. All of them do to an extent, all the columns of light, but especially the wisdom energetics, when we add that to the columns of light, that is definitely traversing through time. So then you have this column of light that you put there just now that has been there when your relatives have been there. And that's the beautiful thing about the work that we do right now in this whole spectrum of time, this illusion of time, is, is that as we're right here and we're doing the work, we are affecting the past. Creation does not happen in the future and creation does not happen in the past. Creation happens right here in the moment. And when we anchor that column of light, it affects everything here, which then affects everything here. So it's a beautiful feedback loop. That is what we're doing with ourselves and doing that work with ourselves. So now then, you know, for me, with all the work that I've done with all of my, you know, bringing in all of my traumas and all the stuff, bringing that into wisdom, um, it has changed those lifetimes. As I become realized in this lifetime, every one of my lifetimes becomes realized at the same time. It's just part of how time functions. Um, so yeah, anchoring your column of light will affect the relatives. And it also affects the water that flows downstream from there too, Diane. So that's it too, is that you've affected that water that flows through there. It is going to bring more of its consciousness you bring more consciousness to water, water automatically starts to clean and clear itself and affect the rest of the environment. Uh, Peter, my two-year-old granddaughter picked up the Hedica copper coil and said aqua as she was holding it out to my wife and me. We both looked at each other in amazement nearing falling off the sofa. <laughs> that is beautiful. So the Hedica symbol has been used um, throughout time here on the planet. It was used in the healing rooms in Atlantis, uh, great big on the walls. I mean, for decades, even here, third density reality, I mean, for decades, 
fishermen on the East Coast have been making them, putting them in their holding tanks to keep fish alive longer, the Hedicas. And another beautiful thing about, you know, that Hedica is, is that um, I just happen to have one in my pocket because I'm getting ready to take this to go through it in the Pacific Ocean um, next week. So anyway, the, the Hedicas, um, the Hedicas people have just had remembrances of those because as I was getting these out in the world and I was showing them to people, a lot of people have been would say I've been drawing that since I was a kid or, you know, look at that tattoo I have, things like that. So people do have that remembrance of that Hedica symbol. And it must have been a pretty profound thing because usually people only have remembrances of all their traumatic things that happened. But it's amazing the people that have remembered the Hedica from lifetimes past. So that's beautiful that your two-year-old granddaughter <laughs> and Nate Lee knows that as well. Hey, Lee. I had a dream last night where I was with a person who passed 10 plus years ago. I had them stand under the golden... Holy crap. I had them stand under the golden fire activator. It's on a spinner in my kitchen. Just as you were to walk into my kitchen right now. No words were said and can't remember what happened after that. Oh, so, yeah, I'm not sure where out on the time continuum you worked with him at, Malit. I don't know if you worked with him before or him as a wayward or him crossing over, coming back. I'm not sure where in that point you worked with him on his timeline. But, man, you certainly did do the work. And that is super cool that you remember holding that space for him. That's the thing is that right now, as people are crossing over, as people are choosing to leave right now and have been, you know, here for the past year or so, we are seeing that if we hold space or they have a tool, whatever, um, that they're able to go through in the completion process so that they don't have to come back here again to come into the physical to complete the process. So what you did, Lee, I really feel, Lee, that you that you held the space for your friend who passed 10 years ago so that he no longer has to go through the processes and come back and complete that. So I don't know. Whatever it was, it feels huge. So yay, that's fantastic. And thank you for sharing that. Uh, Kendall, I've ordered the 1 and 5 8 inch heavy duty new energy ring. I'm going to put it in my pocket to replace the same wisdom ring in about the same size. Can you give me some ideas on how to how I can use it in my during my day? Um, so Kendall, I would say using that that new energy ring as the way that we were just talking about earlier of um, being mindful of choices. That's that's how I would use that that new energy is just being mindful of things that occur in your world, whether it is something that you wanted to occur or not, and start choosing and start choosing that. Um, because I feel that that is what these new energy tools will support a lot, is our choosing of what we want ourselves to create within our creation. You know, and so that's something too. A uh, quick thing about the about the new energy um, is so this this new energy that we're working in. It's like you. And so I'll, t I'll give you the analogy. So you guys have heard the analogy of of like four blind men trying to describe an elephant, and the blind men all come up to the elephant, and one's like feeling his tail and describing the tail, and another a foot in the trunk and you know the body whatever so all blind men are feeling the same whole larger component but they're just making descriptions of the small piece that they can realize i feel that is what is going on with this new energy ring this new energy that we're working in is is that every time we're making a tool we're pulling a little piece of what this truly is and we have not been able to pull the whole elephant through 
but as you begin to get these tools so if you own these tools it is okay that they are only an elephant's foot or a trunk or an ear or a tail because once we're able to pull the whole elephant through the whole elephant is going to go into each and every one of those tools that are already out there people have been having some profound experiences with this new energy um, but it still isn't here fully yet so we're super excited about that so what to expect with that that small ring and working with it and and i'm really not sure what to tell you there either so we would love to get some feedback from from everybody um you know who is playing in this new energy all right so i'm gonna go back over here to the chat side real quick and remember if you do have questions be sure to drop them on the chat side so i don't miss them here It's good to hear from everybody. Just reading through some chat here. All right. So let's see. It looks like we've got some questions, a couple more questions here. Um, Anna, I'm wondering about the difference between the new silver coil and the silver wand pendant. Um, not sure why I bought both, but also waiting for the chalice hack up. Okay, so the difference between the new silver coil and the silver wand. Now, the, this, the quantum heart coil pendant, it's more like a beautiful safe space. So it keeps us in this beautiful safe container. But yet it magnetizes our light and we're doing great things. We're, we're, we're bringing in our light. We're bringing in experiences. We're, we're bringing in wisdom, you know, all of that is taking place, but you're still in this nice little safe container. The wands are like the safe container, but there's an open top to it. Um, in that open top, basically, you can use the wand. The wand will keep a nice open safe space, but it's also um, allowing you to step out into that space that's not so safe to kind of um work between those two so to speak if i if, if, you, if you catch what i'm saying there also with the the wand style the the wisdom wand pendant um i love my wisdom wand pendant i like to wear this if i was to wear any single tool i think it would probably be the wisdom wand pendant and then the silver wisdom wand but i wear both of these um so with the wisdom wand pendant you can run energy so this will be a little bit different than the coil where the coil just creates that space the wisdom wand pendant um allows it to also be used to run energy so um yeah not sure anna why you were guided to go that route but you know i definitely always trust the guidance with the tools because you know our souls come through our light comes through and and helps us figure out what it is that we need so um yeah i'm not sure what to say about that one Anna. and i do wish that I, we could have made it so that you only had to get the one i mean i really do because well, we would really rather see everybody having the one single tool that they really need instead of every tool that we make, you know, but we do appreciate that, you know, you're guided to get any of the tools. Uh, Misa, any idea how to use the tools to separate from drug use in a house next door? Um, so with drug use, there is, you know, that's a multi-layered thing of, of, of why people use drugs you know it's because they're they're denying their connection they're not following through with what it is that they're doing or else they're just walking through their traumas um uh then another aspect so there's all the internal stuff but then another aspect of drug use would be like um you know kind of 
like marijuana has Mary Jane. There's a methamphetamine, a methamphetamine entity, which is a nasty, weird looking witch person thing. And then there's, uh, you know, then all the alcohols have different entities with them. Pharmaceuticals have their own entities with them. So there is always um, these other parts to a, the to just it's not just the physical component of the drug there there's more to it than that there's the energetic the consciousness plus the person's own stuff so i guess what i'm saying is is that these tools are going to spread and they're going to help with all of those aspects most people that notice huge shifts in the neighborhood have tensor field generators and I would say either Golden Fire or the Divine I Am tensor field generator. The Divine I Am does not expand too far. It's only about the size of a home, but you can, um, with your intention, expand it farther. But a tensor field generator, either the Golden Fire or the Divine I Am, is what I would suggest having in your home for a passive way to just allow that to filter out. And again, it's between them and their soul and what isn't the highest and best, but still, if you put that intention in there and you put in that choice that, hey, I choose to have, you know, this beautiful, harmonious space, you know. Um, so the, the generators would be a good thing. You can do a column of light in that space. Um, but again, the, the tools, the energies will never violate the free will of anybody. We're not really here to go around and help everybody on the planet because we're here to just be, and then that helps everybody on the planet. Um, so how you work with those people, I would say would be just in you know, a passive way. Even if you were anchoring a column of light there, you are doing it just to bring wisdom and light to the place. Um, you're not coming in there with the intentions of, you know, of all those hardcore intentions of, oh, you got to get sober and, oh, I don't want this in my field and things like that. Um, for any of these energies to work, they require you to have compassion. They require you to be in the heart space, have compassion, and then basically you are shining your light for them to have other different potentials and possibilities to choose from and opens up their own compassion and their own light or themselves. And then that shifts everything too. So it's kind of holding space for them. And any of the tools basically will hold space. Nika, I've also placed the new energy ring inside the wings of talk pendant. Oh, it feels like the new energy is awesome, but more potential is just waiting to grace us and wow us. <laughs> yeah, no, and that feels really good too, Nika. But yeah, that's very true. You know, the the alchemist Taurus. Oh my, when that one fully, fully comes in, um, not everybody's gonna be able to handle that one. That is going to be a pretty amazing amazing tool it's pretty amazing right now those of you who have the alchemist taurus but it's not fully in yet um and when it is fully in you'll know for sure so it's so no worries you're it's all going to get anchored in it really will for now they're all phenomenal um and brenda are there going to be any of the new energy rings in silver yeah most definitely we're we're still kind of playing with this whole the whole new energy um potentials right now but yeah this definitely going to be put in silver and we're going to be utilizing it quite a bit as soon as we can bring in the whole elephant so um still working on that which tensor tool do you think will help to program or activate your jump DNA or light codes for higher potential? Any, any of the tools that we make have those potentials put in them since the beginning, since the, um, um, yeah, even since when we first started making our third templates, the, the, the galactic ascension rings were DNA scrubbers. 
in each one of the little nodes of the twist of the galactic rings there was a little torus and it was going out and scrubbing dna then the harmony came along and the harmony was doing all of that all the dna strands of of, of all of our potentials as multi-dimensional beings that was all coming through and activating and then you know then every energetic since then has built upon that and expanded those potentials of working with the dna and so now then um that is in all the tools and you know truly the the wisdom the wisdom ring the, the alchemist sets the wisdom ring and the new energy are all ones that are working so far beyond our physical DNA, what we know as our DNA. I mean, we started working on the quantum DNA back when the balance and harmony ring came in. But now then with these wisdoms, it's more like soul level DNA. I mean, we're going through, we're doing the wisdom, we're doing the deep, deep stuff that is so far beyond, um, you know, just the physical DNA, which still all affects the physical DNA. So anyway, yeah, any of the tools, but if you're really wanting to get, you know, super deep on that leading edge of working with the DNA, then yeah, I would suggest the wisdom, an alchemist set, or the new energy. So let's see a couple of other updates. Um, just a quick couple of quick updates and then I'm probably gonna run away because um, we're giving the production side of Twisted Sage Studios a week off this next week um, we'll still have a, a decent sized crew coming in getting packages out answering emails and questions things like that but we're giving a, quite a few people a week off here um, just to spend with family things like that we were originally going to be going out to the uh i was going to take everybody which is why we originally gave everybody the week off we were going to go to los angeles to go set up for that big event the mass meditation initiative which i'm supposed to be headlining but part of this new energy is is that you know i just eh, i don't want to be out there i don't want to be out there pushing the fight um you know because Everybody who wants me to present is wanting me to present on, you know, the columns of light and clearing the dark and stuff like that. And it's like, eh, it's not what we're doing. That's, you know, that was great for the old paradigm, but it's not the paradigm we're in now. So, you know, everything's changing for, for me to figuring out what the heck. But as far as teaching, sorry, point is, is that we decided that we're not going out to LA and then we were going to do fairy Congress and then they, that's actually a month later. So we're just all going to do our own thing. My daughter and I, who's almost 12, are jumping on the motorcycle right after this. And we're going to drive eight days to the Redwoods and all the way back. We're making a big circle. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to call it sabbatical. And we're going to take off for the week. So no 50 questions Friday next week. And then we will be back um, the 27th. We actually have PBS, uh, Public Broadcasting Services, coming to do a pilot TV program for its tiny towns in the United States. And Twisted Say Studios is going to be on this pilot program for PBS, which is kind of cool because they're interested in, you know, different things that happen in little towns around the country. So... That's what we'll be doing here a week from Sunday is we're all going to come in on a Sunday and pretend to work and um, do PBS. Um, let's see. I was trying to think if there's anything else. Um, gosh, putting together a floor plate right now. And Brenda's been working on the Alchemist Tauruses. And we feel that we're getting closer to bringing in the whole elephant. Um, so when that occurs, oh, boy. Um you know, the, the energies right now are just, it's, it's beautiful. Um, yesterday I couldn't function today. I feel great. Brenda has been having a tough time even functioning. So, um, if you're going through the stuff, it's okay. We all are. 
Um, again, just reiterate, make those choices this week. Make the choices and see what happens. So, all right. Love you guys very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the support. Um, we're having, today is the last day to get cell tabs at 16% off for our, because that's our week tool, our weekly tool. Our next week, um, tool of the week is the Wi-Fi ring. So anyway, enjoy you guys. Oh my goodness. I'm excited for everything in the world right now. I hope that you guys have a phenomenal time. Please do play with. The, the concepts we were talking about today about choosing and I would love to hear some feedback from you all when we gather again here in two weeks on um, on how things go all right take care everybody